Camp Kerr is an Army training base located near Tin Can Bay in Queensland, Australia. In 1992, it was the setting of a very bizarre incident, one in which military officers involved in a training exercise claimed that they were attacked by a strange creature. According to the report, which was filed on yowiehunters.com, a group of six men had set out into the woods on a four-week training exercise in which they would be playing the role of the bad guys. Their camp was a couple of kilometers away from the main base. The location was secret to the rest of the participants of the drill. Each night, they would return at dusk after a full day. One man was tasked with doing a perimeter search of 300 meters of their mobile base. Sometime during the third week, the soldier doing the nightly perimeter search returned with concerns that he was being followed and had feelings of being watched. After a few days, the concern became troubling enough that it was determined that two men would perform the perimeter check each night. Both came back telling the same story, that someone was in the woods and it was following them. On the fourth week, the men were happy to receive a food drop consisting of meat. They promptly had supper and then crawled into their tent and went to sleep. At around 2 a.m. that night, they were awoken to loud screaming and something large running through the bush. Their tents were dropped on the men, who laid there in total shock, listening to the creature as it embarked on a frenzy of destruction. After a while, the large creature left the camp, bounding off into the woods. They eventually crawled out of their tents and observed that their camp had been destroyed. After a quick search, they were able to determine that the only thing missing was the ration drop of the remaining meat. Quite shook up by the whole thing, the men radioed for an immediate evac. The next day, a separate unit was deployed to the area in an attempt to find the creature responsible. An inquiry was held, and it was determined that it was neither a joke or a prank. October 2008, a man wrote to Yowie Hunters to offer some clarifications on the 1992 incident. It sounds like the incident at White Bay Military Training Area. If it is the same incident, there were only four members involved with a cast of many throughout the night. The incident occurred pretty well the same, however, the camp was first visited about 22:30 hours after the team of two at camp called for help by radio. An additional two members were sent by vehicle to reinforce the camp. I was one of these members that returned to my camp after conducting tasks away that night. It was only after the support vehicle had left the area that the animal in question commenced to harass the camp to such a point that evacuation was the only suitable course of action. The man went on to claim that blank rounds and flares were used to scare the creature and at one point it had even tried to chase the evacuation vehicle as it drove away. Due to the training activity, it was necessary to return to the location the next morning. After a simulated attack by the good guys, a second encounter occurred. The animal was spotted coming back in towards camp at 0700 hours that morning, then fled the area. All team members involved were sent to Camp Kerr Wide Bay at approximately 0830 hours. The men were eventually told to get their kits together and a vehicle took them to Brisbane. In 2003, another Yowie incident took place in Tin Can Bay. This account was sent to Yowie hunters by a man who claims he also had an encounter during an exercise in that area. According to the witness, they were in the Wide Bay training area playing enemy in a troop level force on force engagement exercise. The witness recalled that it was quite dark one night and they had come across what they thought was some sort of standing patrol or early warning sentry for the position. Initially we thought it was one of our squadron mates trying to take us on. We started maneuvering aggressively against what we assessed as simulated enemy. At this stage something in our guts realized the reaction wasn't quite right. No shots blank fired at us, no shouts or orders, nor were some of the signs and sounds just quite right, such that we just had this gut feeling not to start shooting until we could ID the target. We also knew that the troop commander and troop sergeant of that particular call sign would never put early warning out further than a visual bound from the cars. At that point, the men started throwing rocks and sticks at the individual. The bugger dodged them. Yes, dodged thrown rocks and sticks at night. At this point, the men could hear the individual moving through the woods. Since we'd propped and were listening to this individual wander around, we were starting to get worried. One of my blokes, XRAR and a very experienced hand, sidled up to me and hissed, one of my suspicions. 
This bloke was close to us, and a tall bastard. He took bloody big steps for someone walking around shitty scrub at night, hip height vegetation, with its many trip hazards. Some of the men began to call out to the individual to get him to speak, but he never responded. The witness got the sense that whatever it was, it appeared to be stalking them. Then some of the men began to catch sight of the person. It was about this stage they swore blind it was a humanoid shape when it moved in closer to us, and a big tall shape in the darkness when they could get their eyes adjusted right. The patrol arrived at the same conclusion pretty quickly. We were recon. Be buggered if we would just sit and wait for our friend to keep possessing the initiative for this little jaunt. In a fairly loud voice, I gave the order to form up in an extended line. What I hope was a fairly calm, authoritative voice, I issued hasty attack orders. This is the line of departure. We are advancing to contact against unknown enemy. No duff, no duff. Fix bayonets. Hell, my reasoning was, if it was someone playing silly buggers with us, and they had NVGs, they'd say something like, It's alright, boys. You can put those sharp, pointy things away now. It's just a joke. Nope. Nothing. The men advanced on the person. The witness claims that his imagination got the better of him, and he began to wonder what they would do if whatever this was decided to fight. Thankfully, the entity moved off just outside of their visual away from them, eventually wandering off into the forest. Later, some of the men could hear him wandering around, but it never got close enough for them to worry. 400 meters later, in more open terrain, we spot the enemy troop in defensive locations sitting on a hill. I see the troop sergeant standing on his car. I had a chat with him a couple days later in a squadron harbor when he told me he heard my voice coming in. He heard me from a few hundred meters out giving some sort of orders and then heard us approach his position. When I quizzed him on which direction he was looking, he mentioned the direction our friend had taken, not the direction we were coming in from. And the kicker? He hadn't put his scouts out that night. They were acting as close protection to the troop, expecting us to bump them. He hadn't heard us approaching on our final run-in to target. There was also no other unit in the area. We had the entire sector to ourselves, due to the risk of running over sleeping grunts at night with our cars. What was our friend? No idea. Still couldn't tell you. All I know, that whatever it was, was a lot better than us.